Ladies and gentlemen, I am most touched to have been asked by the Association of Corporate Counsel to address you today and uh, can only apologise for the fact that I cannot join you in person, especially as uh, I understand there, there will be a particular emphasis on environmental, social and governance issues. Now, you will be aware, I very much hope, of the ever-increasing and alarming threat that climate change poses to our economy and society. It is absolutely crucial that we all do what we can to address these challenges. As uh, Mary Kennard, former general counsel of the American University, who kindly introduced my Accounting for Sustainability project to the ACC, noted recently, in your capacity as in-house counsel, you have a vital role to play in assessing and reducing the impact of climate change through measuring and reporting objectively on risks, as well as highlighting any potential opportunities. As a growing number of investors, regulators, academics and others have highlighted, it does not need to be a choice between being profitable on the one hand and doing the right thing on the other. Both are achievable. Indeed, climate change is increasingly seen as a potentially material financial risk and one that must be treated accordingly. In-house counsel is uniquely placed to provide clear information to enable an effective response. And it seems that I am not alone in holding this view. <clears throat> in a recent survey conducted by the ACC, 47% of respondents reported that they provide significant input on their company's sustainability efforts, with another 40% providing occasional input. While this response is encouraging, I fear there is a great deal more that can and must be done. Last year, the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change published a special report on the impacts of global warming of 1.5 degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels. The report makes it clear that we face a number of truly terrifying and interconnected threats unless we take really, act really urgent action to limit global temperature rise to one degree or less, since even restraining it to 1.5 degrees will have catastrophic effects. And it is not just us, ladies and gentlemen, who face these threats, which are already upon us. We are engineering the rapid destruction of the natural world around us, on which we depend for our ultimate survival, along with many of the species with which we share this planet. Ladies and gentlemen, all is not yet totally lost, but this really is the final call. According to the IPCC report, carbon emissions will need to be cut by 45% by 2030 and come down to zero by 2050 in order to have a chance of limiting temperature rises to 1.5 degrees. However, I would argue that the most alarming part of the report is the assumption of negative net emissions over the second half of the century. In other words, we will need to find ways to extract more carbon out of the atmosphere than we are emitting with as yet undeveloped and certainly unproven technologies. In response to these threats, investors are increasingly asking companies to provide information in their financial filings on how sustainability performance affects their organization's strategy, business model, and bottom line. Groups of investors, uh, such as Climate Action 100 Plus, are working together to ensure the world's largest corporate greenhouse gas emitters take necessary action on climate change through engagement on improving governance, curbing emissions, and strengthening climate-related financial disclosures. This represents just one coordinated approach from the investment community. 
the FSB Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures has released recommendations for companies to report such considerations in mainstream annual financial filings. And the Transition Pathway Initiative, led by a global group of asset owners and supported by asset managers, is helping investors assess companies' preparedness for the transition to a low-carbon economy, supporting efforts to address climate change. With um, recognition finally beginning to dawn on investors and the financial services community that climate change can present a material financial risk, securities regulators are also responding. Needless to say, ladies and gentlemen, General Counsel has a, an absolutely crucial role to play in ensuring that the quality of information meets these increasing demands. Further, such is the profound frustration over lack of serious concerted action to prevent catastrophe that climate change litigation is becoming an increasingly common form of activism. Legal cases seeking to hold businesses and governments to account are becoming more prevalent. And I understand that all signatories to the Paris Agreement now have at least one policy or law on climate change impacting the business community. General Counsel's role in helping companies demonstrate that they are seriously working towards mitigating climate impact could play an important part in helping to manage the risks from current and future litigation. The Commonwealth Climate and Law Initiative, of which my AFRS project is one of the founding partners, recently published a series of papers exploring the legal landscape for company directors and has also produced practical guidance to help companies put in place the governance measures necessary to respond. So, ladies and gentlemen, I fear you really have no excuse not to act on global warming and climate change, the greatest threat multiplier of all. Now, I can only conclude by reiterating the real urgency with which we have to take action. You have an opportunity over the next few days to consider the role you can and indeed must play in building resilience by integrating risk management into business practices and decision-making in your respective organisations. With uh, four out of five of the global risks listed by the World Economic Forum for 2019 being environmental, these issues are only going to become vastly more important for your companies, to say nothing of humanity. And so there really is no time to lose. Above all, we owe it to the younger generation.